Hello students. In this video, we are going to study the coagulation or precipitation of lyophobic salts. We already know that the lyophobic salts are unstable. Their solvent repelling or solvent hitting colloidal particles therefore they are highly unstable and we always they always carry some charge on them some charge is adsorbed either negative or positive is adsorbed at their surface and they repel each other that is why they are stable they remain in colloidal solution otherwise they will if there is no charge they will settle down means they are unstable now we are going to study ki how this coagulation or precipitation is carried out and what is the meaning of coagulation and precipitation so we know the stability of colloidal particle is due to the presence of charge on their sur surface and if somehow by any means we are able to remove the charge present on these colloidal particles they will lose their charge and under the influence of weak van der waal forces they will start coming closer they will all move closer and form larger aggregates and this this coming together of colloidal particles when they lose their charge and they begin to come closer and form larger aggregates this coming closer of larger more number of colloidal particles to form aggregates is known as flocculation this coming together of colloidal particles is known as flocculation so it is slightly different from coagulation in the sense just coming together of colloidal particles to form larger aggregates is known as flocculation and once the ions uh, colloidal particles are flocculated they start coming down under the force of gravity they they will settle down at the bottom since they are heavier and this settling down is known as coagulation or precipitation so co flocculation and coagulation are related synonymous since once the colloidal particles are flocculated of course they will settle down they will coagulate they will form precipitate so we have studied two terms first they lose charge by some means and flocculation takes place and flocculation is followed by flocculation is followed by coagulation or precipitation so this coming down of or settling down of colloidal particles and by losing their charge by some means is known as coagulation or precipitation by electrophoresis we can make these colloidal particles lose their charge if the colloidal particles are positively charged they will move, move toward towards negatively charged electrode and lose their charge and settle down at negatively charged electrode if the colloidal particles carry negative charge they will move towards positively charged electrode and lose their charge and of course settle down form precipitate or coagulation will take place so by electrophoresis colloidal particles can be separated from dispersion medium by coagulation or precipitation so this is one method of bringing about this coagulation or precipitation by the method of mutual coagul uh, coagulation in this method we add two oppositely charged colloidal salts two oppositely colloidal 
salts when mixed together they will neutralize each other suppose one is positively charged colloidal solution another is negatively charged colloidal solution when they are mixed they are put in one container they will neutralize the charge present on each other and this is known as mutual coagulation we can take example of suppose we have hydrated ferric hydroxide salt it is positively charged due to adsorption of this so it is a positively charged salt and if we add arsenic sulfide arsenic sulfide salt to this and it is negatively charged so if arsenic sulfide salt is mixed with hydrated ferric hydroxide salt they, they cancel out they neutralize the charge present on them and both the salts will precipitate coagulation of both the salts takes place and this is known as mutual coagulation when two salts are precipitated with the help of each other that is known as mutual coagulation so sometimes in board exams we are asked question related to this mutual coagulation so mutual coagulation is coagulation of two different salts when they are mixed together and they lose their charges or they get neutralized by each other that is known as mutual coagulation this is the example third method is by boiling a colloidal salt a colloidal salt may be coagulated by boiling also if the colloidal salt is boiled the particles colloidal particles start moving they gain kinetic energy and start moving faster and faster at the same time the dispersion medium particles of dispersion medium are also moving with greater kinetic energy and due to the collision of colloidal particles due to the collision of colloidal particles with this dispersion medium the layer of charge present on them gets disturbed so the if the charge is disturbed disturbed they lose their charge and they begin to flock together come together flocculation takes takes place and again coagulation will be taking place so by boiling they lose their charge the charge adsorbed at their surface is dissolved it comes out so colloidal particles becomes means the charge on the uh, present on them is lost to the solution and they come together form larger aggregates under the force of gravity they will settle down fourth method for the coagulation is by repeated dialysis if dialysis is repeated again and again even the last traces of last traces of electrolyte is lost from the solution colloidal solution you know the process of dialysis it is electrolytes present in the solution come out of the membrane semi permeable membrane uh, by repeated dialysis and thereby they lose the charge colloidal particles lose charge and again precipitation will take place the last and the most important method of coagulation is by addition of excess electrolyte we know that some electrolyte is always required for stability of colloidal solution lyophobic colloidal solution but if 
excess of electrolyte is added the neutralization of charges in the solution as well as as that uh, which is present on the colloidal particles the neutralization of the charge takes place and uh, of course coagulation will begin the moment the, the, they lose their charge so excess electrolyte causes coagulation or precipitation the small amount is always required but excess is not good for stability of colloidal particle it will lead to coagulation or precipitation now one there is a rule we'll study in the next video hardy schulz rule regarding the the charge present on the colloidal particle as well as the power of so in hardy schulz rule we'll study the power of electrolyte added for causing coagulation some ions will bring about coagulation very quickly and some ions will take time or more amount of that ion is required and if some ions we are adding they may cause coagulation or precipitation even by a small amount is added so we'll study this in the next video under hardy schulz rule for coagulation or flocculation power regarding this thanks for watching thank you